Okay, you guys, so I have something immense here, and this is not a joke. I'm not joking you one bit. As you can tell, I usually never am. My videos are usually very serious. And um, this is, uh, I'm trying to think of what I can compare this to. What the Lord is showing me is this can be compared to the creation of the world for each and every one of us. Remember, I told you all that the psychological mind is the inner world that we all must transcend. And everything out there is the outer world, which we all must transcend. Now, here's what I'm going to tell you. You have all watched all of this uh, fiasco that's gone on out here with these demon slayers. And I honestly, I, I was just baffled by what was happening out here. I could not for the life of me understand why I was being targeted by all of these people. I could not for the life of me understand this. And every time they would they would um, attack me, I would go back at them. And of course they were abusing me covertly, so you all didn't really understand what was happening. You only saw me going back at them and um, until I started posting what they were doing, okay? Here's, here's what I just wanted to, uh, I, I, don't, I don't even know what kind of order to put this in. I don't even know what kind of order. Okay, so um, so you you all you all saw me go back at them and put them in their place, and I was dumbfounded. Actually, I was truly dumbfounded because I was able to see in the spirit how there were thirteen people at one point attacking me, and bam, I was knocking them down like bowling pins in the spirit. It was like nothing could touch me, and still every day I was out here. Still trying to help you guys in any way that I could and putting these people in their places and had no physical support here whatsoever. I didn't understand why this was happening, how this was happening, or, or actually how to transcend what was happening. Every single thing I said these people were attacking me, calling me a witch and a demon. And at one point I was saying that they're, they're sending word curses on me. And how could these people say that they're demon slayers and they're sending word curses to me by constantly calling me a witch and a demon? None of this made sense to me. I felt like I was living in a nightmare. And then on top of that, calling themselves demon slayers, saying that they were working for the Lord... And knowing that I had a demon here, and instead of trying to help me, they're calling me a demon, and they're fighting with me. Leaving this thing to attack me. I just could not understand this. The only thing that I was getting was, my call was very, very high. My call was extremely high. This is why all these people were attacking me. There was no other reason for this. I had never experienced anything like this in my life. Um, I told you now, when I, when I was following Hinduism, Holy Spirit brought me back to the Bible. I knew when it was time to leave and come back to the Bible. And within a month or two, I was out here teaching the Bible. I was out here teaching the Bible and trying to help everybody. The Holy Spirit told me immediately, that I was to focus on the people from the mystics community and the occult, which is what I what I transcended. So that was the area I was supposed to focus on to help those people see what's happening to them and, and to help them see that Jesus is their only freedom, their only way to freedom. That was my assignment. And all of these pastors out here did everything they possibly could to destroy me, literally destroy me. And I said, there's, there's nothing godly about any of these people. And how do these people actually sit there and call themselves men of God? I could not understand this for the life of me.
And uh, the, the, the other one, Vlad, had three of his junior pastors attack me. And these people, the, at least two of them that I know of, actually studied under Prophet T.B. Joshua. I'm baffled beyond belief. You studied with a prophet like T.B. Joshua and you're out here acting like a sleeper. None, none of this made any sense to me. So what happened? Just a few days ago, well, there were things that I said that I knew instinctively that the Holy Spirit was, was allowing me to understand because I had, the Holy Spirit had delivered me. Now I'm over 60, 60 demons delivered. Or I don't know if, if every time I threw up was a demon or if a demon only partially came out and I threw up several times because of the same demon. I don't know. But over 60 times I threw up watching deliverance videos, right? Well, I understood right away that Jesus said in the Bible that if, if demons are being delivered here, then the Holy Spirit is here because Satan cannot cast out Satan. Yet these people were bound and determined to keep calling me a witch and a demon. Oh, that was the other verse that I wanted to get. Bear with me. Okay, here it is. So, um, so these people were bound and determined to call me a witch and a demon. And yet Jesus plainly said that Satan cannot cast out Satan. And here I'm, I'm, I'm telling you guys, all these demons are being cast out of me. Massive changes are happening in my spiritual life. I'm deepening into the Lord. Um, um, expanding in the spirit realm and yet these people are constantly attacking me what is it i i just i didn't know i had to trust the lord that he was guiding me in whatever way that i needed to learn because i was never taught properly in the lord ever i was never taught properly this is in fact what the lord has done since the dark night of the soul and i want you guys to understand this i have never been studied under a teacher ever when i studied the work of nisargadatta nisargadatta had already left the body so i was just constantly reading his books 24 7 and the holy spirit was allowing me to understand what i was reading and i want you to really understand what happened here because nisargadatta was actually a realized master he was in the existential reality the Holy Spirit did not allow me to retain much information on any kind of cosmology or anything like that, which is why when I was brought back to the Bible, everything I was saying was in the Bible. There, there was no heresy or anything like that going on here. And I can't explain it, but this is exactly what happened. So... The Holy Spirit was in control of lifting the veils and what I was allowed to understand and what I was allowed to see. Within no time at all, I was in the existential reality and I was literally teaching Nisargadatta's work on YouTube while I was still over in Hinduism. I had, I had understood what the, what the personhood was. Um, I had already witnessed that I, was, that I was actually watching my thoughts, that I was not my thoughts. So I had already known that the psychological mind was separate from me, but now the journey continued. Well, if it's separate from me, where is it coming from? That was when the Holy Spirit led me back to learn about these demons. Because Hinduism does not teach about demons because they are worshiping demons. This is what the whole thing was. So the Holy Spirit at the right time led me back to the Bible and brought these demon slayers into my awareness so that I could learn about these demons. And once I learned about these demons, that was all I could think about. I, I wanted to help everybody get rid of these demons. It wasn't to be, it wasn't to be. I was called to be a prophet and I am in the existential reality. And the Lord has been talking to me this whole entire eight and nine years. And I've been telling you guys this. So what happened? 
ever since I went through the dark night of the soul, I went up against everybody. Uh, the, the former gurus, the second guru, because what did he do? He just abandoned me. He just abandoned me twice. <laughs> I, 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 I had to go up against everybody. And I'm seeing now there was a true reason for everything that has happened. And this is what I'm so shocked about, but the Lord has finally allowed me to see it. So, Vlad in, the other day interviews Prophet Lovi. And this is when all these things started happening. And I went with the Holy Spirit and I said, I feel bad dragging him into this because this is one huge mess that's going on here. All these people attacking me. I feel bad bringing him in here. And the Holy Spirit said he is here for a reason. That I am to use him as a source, a mirror for what, what should be. Okay? I should not feel bad about this. He's here. He was brought into our awareness for a reason. And so I left it at that. I did not question the Holy Spirit. And all of a sudden, for, for two years, I was seeing these demonic faces in the clouds, 3D faces in the clouds. They're gone. Then I showed you that day, as, as soon as I told you guys all of this, the, the rainbow was there. And as soon as I finished recording the rainbow, it dissipated right in front of me. Um, the Lord has been moving, moving, moving here. And um, so here's what happened. So you know the last few days what's been happening. I mean, these demon slayers, they're not wasting any time or effort attacking me. Here's the thing that I just saw right now. And who was it that, that Lord have mercy. I, I just can't believe how wonderful Jesus is. I, I can't believe it. It was Prophet Lovi. It was Prophet Lovi. I had watched uh, two videos by uh, Prophet TB Joshua. Got another demon out here. I, don't, I lost count anymore. And um, then I watched, I turned on a video by Prophet Lovi. I'm going to put that video in the description because I know I am going to get massive attacks on this video. And I no longer care. I no longer care. Um, I'm going to explain to you what I was um, shown in Prophet Lovi's video. And I'm going to explain it to every single person out here who has been following my page, who has been a former follower of Nithyananda or in the mystics community. And I want you to listen to me very carefully. Okay. This is probably the most important video that I have ever made in my life. It's this one. And you can all get free. You can all get free. Praise God. Praise God. And I said, why isn't this demon out of here? I said, it's got to be because God wants to teach me something. And I was attacked on that. No, it, it's not because God wants to teach you something. Uh, it's because I'm a demon and a witch. That's why this thing was still. A no, it was because God wanted to teach me something. Because if this thing was out of here too soon... I might have stopped looking for the answers on how to overcome these demons. See, this was the purpose of all of this. God, God will never, ever make us purposely suffer, ever. But we, in our sleep, have made decisions in our life that have opened up portals for these demons to enter us, there is a price that we have to pay. It doesn't mean that God will not deliver us. God's promise is that he will deliver us. But it's in his time. It's not in our time. And this is what every single one of us has to understand. So the first thing that I want to tell you guys is, if you were led to Nithyananda, you were led there from the spirit realm because... You really have to fully understand that you are not this body. This body truly is a vessel. Everything that's happening in our life, we are being guided one way or the other by the spirit realm. If you were led to Nithyananda, there were several reasons. And we were in massive sleep, massive sin. And there could have been generational curses. Um, and no doubt... 
I had understand I had understood this for a while now. Whatever this generational curse was had to do with sex. It had to do with sex. And I know on my mother's side of the family there was incest there. Um I have to tell you, there was fornication in my life. You see, I had such massive abuse in my life that from the age of six years old, I was taking care of my two younger sisters. I actually had a therapist say to me that my behaviors mimic someone who had experienced child sexual abuse. And I was like, I don't remember experiencing child sexual abuse couldn't think of anything that could have ever happened. Well, the truth of the matter was I did experience child sexual abuse. You see, my first teenage boyfriend who, who wound up being my, my oldest daughter's father, I was with him for seven years. I first met him when I was only 14 years old and he raped me. That was how we first had sex. He raped me and he violently sodomized me at 15 years old. And um, I wouldn't tell on him because in, in all of the abuse that I had been through, I literally believed that this violent rapist loved me. And I, I believed that he was the only person who ever had loved me. So I would never tell on him. I always protected him. So as you can see, I was severely trauma bonded to him. But in fact, I was a child. I was a child. And while all this was happening... Uh, my stepfather had died when I was 14 years old and my mother went ballistic. Um, she found out that he had a whole nother family on the side. The girl that he was with just had a baby by him. And here he was, 34 years old, died of uh, lung cancer. I believe now it was mesothelioma, but no one had heard of it back then. But he was uh, a naval officer in the Navy, so most likely he got it from the ships and the shipyard. I believe it was mesothelioma. And um, so he dies at 34 years old. My mother was 33, 32. Um, just finds out that he had a whole nother life. And here I was, I, I was a mess. I was a mess. Um, this guy raped me twice, um, trying to go to high school. My stepfather died. My stepfather was all I knew as a father and he treated me very badly. I was the scapegoat in my house. My mother beat me like an animal forever since I couldn't remember. The abuse was very, very severe. And um, here I was now. Stepfather died. The mother lost her mind. She was out partying every night. And here I was. I became the mother of my house at 14 years old, which is why I couldn't. When the, when the therapist asked me if I had been sexually abused as a child, I couldn't think of anything because I never saw myself as a child. This is the abuse. It's called adultification. It's a very serious form of child abuse. You see, I never saw myself as a child. So when she said you had child sexual abuse, that my behaviors show that I had child sexual abuse, I was like, I was thinking four or five years old. I never saw myself as a child. So this is what has happened out here, uh, or to me. So... With what is going on with Nithyananda and, and his whole Kailasa thing and setting everything up uh, in, the, in the way of the way Osho did it, um, there's got to be some kind of generational curse in your family history regarding sex. It's got to be. Or you've had an abortion. Something, something like that. Um, there, there's, as, as I keep saying, people are not brought into our awareness by accident. Okay. So I, I need for you to think about your family history and your own history, your own past. What has happened? Um, were you promiscuous? I wasn't promiscuous, but I was fornicating from 14 years old. And it was very normal because I saw myself as an adult and I had no parental guidance, nothing, nothing. Um, but I was with that one person. I wasn't sleeping around. I was with that. I saw myself as an adult and this was my boyfriend. We were a couple. So for seven years, I was, I was with just him. Okay. 
Uh, but it was fornication nonetheless. It was a sin. The whole thing was a sin. And of course, I didn't know that because I had never read the Bible. So this is what I'm telling you. We, people are not brought into our awareness by accident. So if you were led to Nithyananda as a guru, it had something to do with the generational curse of sex. It could be incest, rape, uh, child sacrifice, something, abortion, something, something like that. This is why you were led to him. Secondly, something that was just shown to me by the Holy Spirit today, today, as I was watching Prophet Lovi, he talked about our names that our mother had given us, that if it's... um. The name given to us by our parent that, that does not coincide with what God has called us for, it is an a curse, so, which is why we, we, we start things, we do well, and then things constantly fall apart. And what, what the Holy Spirit was, showed me was the spiritual name that Nithi and Anda had given us. You must renounce it. So I, I did that. I did that. and um, But this is the first time I, it was even brought to my attention so this is why I'm saying it to you. Renounce it. And and I don't know if you're connected with the Holy Spirit. I will never tell you to pray to any of these false gods. I'm hoping and praying that you have watched my journey and you have seen my growth and that you understand that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And you must move away from, the, from that darkness. Jesus is the only way. Jesus is the only way, you guys. I hope you know by now I have never been out here lying to you guys. So, I'm not, I will never tell you to pray to any of those false gods because you're praying to demons. You're calling more demons to yourself. Start praying to Jesus. Start praying to Jesus. And um, I, I have asked the Holy Spirit if he, if he would show me a, a spiritual name that I can use that would be in alignment with, with his calling for me, okay? Um, so I'm waiting to hear back on that one. Um, here's the other thing that I want to show you scripturally, that what I was doing out here was scripturally correct by calling out these pastors, these demon slayers that were attacking me. And here's the thing. I was worried that they were putting word curses on me, but no, because of the fact that what I was doing was scripturally correct, they were actually cursing themselves. They were actually cursing themselves. And this co coincides with the message that the Lord sent me out here to these people a year ago saying, repent, or he will allow you to experience what's coming for you. I, I, I'm, I'm stunned. I'm stunned by all of this. So the first thing I'm going to read you is Isaiah 54, 17. It says, No weapon forged against you will prevail. And you, hear this, you will refute every tongue that accuses you. You will refute every tongue that accuses you. Not you should be quiet about it. See what Prophet Lovi just said very plainly. If you are quiet about it and do not refute it, you have accepted it. Because of the fact that I came out and refuted everything that these people were saying to me. It was not a curse on me. In fact, God literally cursed them. And I will show you that in a minute. So it says... No weapon forged against you will prevail, and you will refute every tongue that accuses you. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and this is their vindication from me, declares their Lord. We have the Lord's permission. We must refute the lying tongues that are accusers out here. Otherwise, we are accepting the curses that they're putting on us. This is a command, okay? So, Genesis 12, 3. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse, and all peoples on the earth will be blessed through you. These are for the people who are called. 
to be servants of the Lord. You see, and it, it's what what was what was throwing me for a loop. I kept saying, no man of God, no woman of God would ever be behaving like this out here, ever. And I was I was right. I was right. So this is biblical. What I did out here was actually biblical, and I didn't even know it. I just followed what I was being led to do by the Holy Spirit. And as I told you all, whatever I'm led to do, I do, and I don't question it. I don't question it ever. So it's Genesis 12, 3. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse, and all peoples on the earth will be blessed through you. They have, in fact, cursed themselves because I had, in fact, been called to a very high position to serve the Lord. And I had no clue about this. I, I truly had no clue because I was never taught anything about the fivefold ministry. I had never heard the term fivefold ministry until a month or so ago. I didn't know anything about these things. And, uh, I just knew that God was here and I went through the dark night of the soul and from the moment I started going through the dark night of the soul I knew it was God and I would not deviate from anything that God was telling me and that was it I didn't know that it was called a prophet or it was called anything else I just knew it was God here okay so um, what what prophet Lovi says in this in this video which is the key that's going to set us all free. Although I have to say that over 60 something demons have been casted out by the Holy Spirit here by renouncing and repenting. Um, this, this main demon here is still here. And I want to tell you, there was um, a webinar that Nithya Nanda did. I don't, it had to be like five or so years ago. And it was, he said, he told everybody that we all had a spiritual scent. And the webinar was to, what he said, to get in oneness with the Lord, with the cosmos, and we would be given our scent. And for me, it was sandalwood. Sandalwood was the scent that I was given. And um, this demon here is constantly shooting me sandalwood now for the past two to three days. It's constantly shooting me sandalwood. Yesterday, after I made the video that I've been a celibate for nine years, and when you're in the spirit, you, you have no desire for sex or anything. This thing has been sexually attacking me since yesterday or the day before, and it, it just reinforced everything I said. Well, of course, I bound it and fired it up with the Holy Spirit, but there, there truly is. I can fight this thing off while this thing is touching me sexually. When you're truly in the spirit... There's, there's nothing, you have no desire for sex, okay? So, um, this thing knows it's getting ready to go, and, and, and it, right now, when I, after I, while I was watching Prophet Lovi's video, this thing started shooting me sandalwood, the scent of sandalwood, to, to make me uh, remember that, that webinar to say, uh, you're in oneness with God right now, here's the scent, here's the scent, here's the scent. Well, well, no, so this thing is getting really, really nervous, and it's hurting me something terrible. So um, I I'm going to be free very soon, and here's what I want you guys to know. Here's what Prophet Lovi shared, and oh, Lord, everything just opened up for me. We should not be rebuking anything. We should not be rebuking or renouncing generational curses rebuking the spirit of fear, rebuking the spirit of anger, screaming for it to get out. Um, here's what he said. What it rang, what it rang true for me was the verses of Jesus in the last temptation. So I pulled that up. That's in Luke 4. And I'm going to read, I'm going to read what the devil says to him because what actually happens in, in the last temptation of Christ 
is exactly opposite of what's happening to us. And now I'm hoping that you're going to understand what actually was shown here to me. Okay? So, it says, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell this stone to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone. So do you understand what Satan is doing here? He's, he's throwing accusations at Jesus, saying, If Jesus is God, well, Satan knew Jesus was God. If you're God... Satan's not doing that to us. Satan's telling us we're dirt. God wants nothing to do with us. He owns us. These are the, th the lies he's telling us. So what did Prophet Lovi say? This is where the light bulb went on for me. We are to consistently say, I am saved. I am the light. I am the head and not the tail. I have the authority to trample on snakes and scorpions. All of the positive things that the Lord has said to us that gives us his power as his children. We are to be repeating, even if it's to ourselves, because I'm going to tell you, I don't have a psychological mind any longer. I have no thoughts in here. Only this, this thing will throw stuff at me every once in a while and I will just bind it and it's gone. My mind is totally still. This thing never says anything to me. It's constantly touching me sexually, which is how I knew this had to be due to a sexual generational curse, a sexual sin, which for me it was just fornication it was, and it wasn't like I was a loose goose and slept around with everybody. No, I was with one man for seven years and my, uh, my psychopath husband, I was married to him for 16 years. And I think in between there, I had maybe three or four boyfriends, short-term boyfriends, which of course sex was involved. So I wasn't a loose goose, not by, not by society standards, but by God's standards. Yeah, it was pretty bad. So I'm believing that there's, there's some kind of sexual generational curse here. Um, because I do know that my mother's family had incest in her family. And my mother never, ever spoke about her family, ever. My mother was definitely embarrassed of her family, would never speak of her family. So there were bad things that happened in my mother's family that I don't even know about. So this is, this is what is allowing, because I've been a celibate for the past eight years. Why is this thing constantly touching me sexually? Why did this thing deform my genital area? When I was a celibate, why did this thing deform my genital area? It had to be from some kind of generational curse. So this is what I'm telling you. So... So even, so I'm not getting any thoughts. I'm not getting any, anything being said to me by this demon, just constantly being touched in the genital area. And it will hurt me in the genital area when, when it gets nervous and it knows that it's getting close to getting out. Um, every single time that I got close to understanding what the Holy Spirit was trying to show me, what was the right way to get this thing out? This thing would start hurting me something terrible. This is what it started doing now, hurting me something terrible. And now for the past two days, it's been shooting the scent of sandalwood at me. Okay. This, this was it. This was the key. This was the key that the Holy Spirit was trying to get me to see. It's right here. So we should be repeating to ourselves because of course these demons are not going to tell us, well, if you're God, because we're not God, what, what the, these demons are going to tell us is, you're nothing. God doesn't love you. God will never forgive what you did. Um, anything to keep us away from God, these demons will do to us. We have to know what Jesus told us. We are the light. We are saved. We are saved by his blood. We are healed by his stripes. We are, have the authority 
to trample on, on snakes and scorpions. So the same exact thing that Jesus did in the desert. See, except, except, except it's reversed. The devil was telling him, if you're God and Jesus was bringing it down, you will not tempt God. And so for our case, the devil is bringing us down and we're bringing ourselves up into the light. We should not ever fight Satan on Satan's terms. We're going to bring ourselves up into the light. This is the key, you guys. It's not about rebuking things and then crying for 20 years. God, why haven't you Why haven't you delivered me yet? I know your word says that, that de deliverance is the ch children's bread. So why haven't you delivered me yet? And this is what I was doing here. Lord, I don't know what you want from me. I don't know what you want from me. I've transcended the world. I've given up everything. I only want to live for you. I don't understand what's happening here. Why haven't you delivered me yet? Well, he was trying to get me to understand what he was telling me, what I needed to do. See, in in this chapter in Isaiah, what he's telling us is you will refute every tongue that accuses you. He doesn't say that he will refute every tongue that accuses you. In Genesis, he says he will curse those who curse you. He didn't say he will break the curse that was already on you. This is what everybody has missed. He did not say that he would break the curse that was already on you. Jesus was the example of what we need to do. We have to proclaim who we are in the light. We cannot fight Satan in Satan's darkness. We have got to raise up into the light. Proclaim who we are. So, so what Prophet Lovi said, which, which actually blew my mind. Once again, he's using different words than me. The Holy Spirit gave me a different understanding because he, know how, he knows how I would understand it. So what, what Prophet Lovi said is the whole entire universe has ears and can hear God, because God is everywhere. And he said, even if you're sick, even if you're sick, uh, you've got a pain in your stomach, you speak to your stomach and you tell your stomach to heal. And your stomach will heal. He said once he started understanding that, when people would come to him with a deformity or something, he would tell somebody's arm to lengthen and it would lengthen because the arm can hear. See, we're looking at this form as a body. Like, like this is us with this person. No, this is a vessel. This is a vessel. Every single thing in this universe can hear. So even if, if a person comes to you with one leg shorter than the other, you can speak to that leg and tell that leg in the name of Jesus, lengthen, lengthen in the name of Jesus, and that leg can hear. What is it? God spoke everything into existence. God spoke everything into existence. And I just went over this with you. See, I told you, nothing happens on my page by accident, you guys. It was in John 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him, all things were made. Without Him, nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. What is the spoken word? What is that all about? Well, as Prophet Lovi said that, that everything in the universe has ears, can hear. What I had explained to you, what creates sound? What, cre what creates that word? It is energy, light, vibration, and sound. That's, what cre that's how you can hear words being spoken. It's energy, light, vibration, and sound. This is the spoken word. So we could speak anything we want into existence. And here's another thing where all these demon slayers were bashing New Age. Um, new, uh, here's the thing. As I told you, Satan knows the truth because he was there when, when God created everything. He was... He, Satan was a creation of God, but he was there in heaven. Satan knows the truth. When he came down here, he twisted the truth. He's, he's the father of lies, but there must be some truth in what he says. So not everything that these new age people are talking about is untrue. The fact of the matter is, it's twisted. It's twisted. 
so that these people are believing that they are God, that they are praying to the universe, uh, they, are, they are praying to these false gods instead of to Jesus and the one true God. You see, the premise of what they were saying with this, um, I, st I still can never think about what it is. When, when you speak things into, into, into reality. And I, I, I was out here saying, you, we, don't, we don't manifest what we want. We manifest what we believe. Why? Because our belief system is in the heart space. And if you notice, before Jesus cast out any demons, he said, do you believe? This is key. You don't manifest what you want. You manifest what you believe. You'll hear in this video with Prophet Lovi, he says, even for um, your finances, he said, just look at your debit card and speak to your debit card and tell your debit card, uh, there'll be no more lack anymore. I want six digits. I want seven digits, whatever you want. There will be no more lack anymore. The whole entire universe has ears. It can hear you. When we speak out what we want, the angels move into action. See, if we don't speak out with what we want, we're sitting here praying in lack. It, it, it's not causing anything to happen. We've all been instructed in the wrong way out here. This is, this is the, the horribleness of what has happened, which now you can understand why these people were out here attacking me. This whole thing has been so horrific, but let me tell you something. Our God is an awesome God. It, it's, it's, through the, it's through the journey that is the magnificence of everything here. It is through the journey. It is what God has taught me. and God has shown me how I have grown and deepened in the Lord. That, that has been so magnificent here that I just want to jump out of this skin. I just want to jump out of this skin. I can't believe it. I just can't believe it. So the key, the key of it is to understand God is everywhere. God is everywhere. Every single thing, every single thing is alive in the universe. As I said, we believe that this 3D realm is all there is, and this is the sleep. This is where all of these people were in, which is why they were attacking me, because they were afraid of me. The same way they're afraid of New Age, which is why they attack New Age. So understand, there is a twisting. This is what Satan does. He takes God's truth, and he twists it for his benefit. This is why, now I hope you're going to get a good idea of what I've been saying out here, that the existential truth is the exact opposite of the world truth. It's a paradox. Because Satan had taken God's truth and he twisted it. He twisted it to make us believe what he wanted us to believe. This God that we all know from religion is the God that Satan created or allowed us to understand through the religions that were developed in the world. This God that we all believe is God from every single religion on this planet is the God that Satan has allowed us to believe was God. It's not the God of all creation. This is why I have been out here against all of this, all of these attacks. Because I want you to know who the real God is. I want you to know who the real God is. So I'm going to put all of these Bible verses in the description. I'm going to put Prophet, Prophet Lovi's video in the description. And you guys, if you were in the uh, occult, if you were following Nithi Ananda, if you were, if you were doing powers, you are loaded with demons. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm not attacking you. This is fact. This is truth. You are loaded with demons. Now, you could do these self-deliverance videos because you probably have a lot of them. And um, 
at the same time, you should begin, you should begin, if, if, you, if you're if you a former Christian, then then you're, you're familiar with Jesus, you, you need to get reacquainted with Jesus, and give your life to him, give your life to him, and I would strongly urge you to get water baptized so that you have an infilling of the Holy Spirit. And begin doing these things, learning these Bible verses uh, of the, the things that Jesus, the power that Jesus gave us. Because this is what we need to keep saying out loud to get these demons to understand who they're dealing with. And the more we do that, the more power we believe in ourselves. And these things will have to leave because it will be so unbearable for them here. Do you understand? I, I'm I'm just almost in shock right now. I'm just almost in shock. This is the reason why the, the Lord did not remove this demon because you heard me say there's the, there's no one, no being more powerful anywhere in all of creation than God or the Holy Spirit or Jesus. And why is this thing still here? What am I missing? What am I missing? It wasn't that I believed God was trying to torture me. It was what am I missing? What am I missing? And this is why I, I was instinctively led to this thing is still here because God is trying to show me something and that in fact was the truth that in fact was the truth and I'm going to tell you this emphatically do not ever let anyone I don't care who it is do not ever let anyone speak badly of you because when you do you are accepting that curse that they're putting on you you must stop it we're commanded so in the Bible. And here's the final thing that Prophet Lovi said in this in this video that, that I took to my heart. I've heard people say it before, but it was head knowledge. It is now heart knowledge. To bless those who curse you. And this is more than just words. This is more than just saying, oh, I don't want to bless these people. There, there is, a, there is a, an absolute reason why we must do this. We cannot fight these demons at their level. We've got to always remain in the light. That is our power. We've got to always remain in the light. And we bless those who hurt us. We bless those who curse us. From this day forward, this is all that I will ever be doing. Is sending out blessings to everybody. But I will constantly correct anyone who dares to attack me and call me a witch and a demon. Because understand right now, the last person you want to attack is a prophet of the Lord. It's really the last person you want to attack. Because I was doing the work of the Lord and I didn't even understand that I was doing exactly as I've been commanded to do. Didn't even understand it. But when you're in the existential reality, this is this is who you are. It's not what you're reading in a book. It's who you are. It's who you have become in spirit. And now I fully understand. This is the reason why Prophet Lovi was brought into my awareness. Was so that I could get this information because... None of these people that I was seeing out here, and I'm thinking, these people are supposed to be experts in casting out demons. None of these people would even help me. And, and I'm sitting here, Lord, Lord, why, why is this thing still here, Lord? Why? Why, Lord? Why, Lord? And I'm, I'm constantly watching these deliverance videos, so I'm getting other demons out, but this main one was still here. And this is the reason why. This is the reason why. This is a really powerful one here. And uh, no, I have to stand. I have to stand on my power in Christ. And not fight this thing at, at a low level, at, at, a, at a, a, a personhood level. I have to fight this thing at a spiritual level. In the light. In the light. And this thing knows this now. This thing is shooting sandalwood at me for the past 24 hours shooting sandalwood at me and I knew exactly what it was doing this was the webinar that I went to with Nithya Ananda that said 
when you are in oneness, what his webinar said was when you are in oneness with the cosmos, you will have a spiritual scent. And this was the scent that I was given. And uh, this is what this demon is sending me. So you understand? So I know what this thing is doing. And it's afraid right now because it knows that I know I got the key now how to get rid of it. It knows now. So I wanted you guys to hear this. Please take every single word I said to heart. Listen to Prophet Lovey's video. Forget about all of this stuff that you heard from these demon slayers. Just forget about it. Listen to Prophet Lovey's video and do what he says. Just do what he says. And um, I will see you on the next one, you guys. Be blessed. Be prosperous. And bless every enemy you've ever had. And mean it with your heart. Mean it with your heart. You must always remain in the light. Always. You guys be blessed.